The following is an Ice on Mars presentation. Let's talk about the unaired pilot to The Walking Dead. That's right, it's Uwe Boll's House of the Dead. What the fuck? Um. Hey everybody, this is Michael T. Bradley. And Audrey Ivancy. And we are going to talk about the Uwe Boll masterpiece, House of the Dead. <laughs> Do you want to start out with the uh, the basic plot synopsis, Audrey? <laughs> sure. There is uh, this guy who's like thinking about what's just happened in his life. And we start basically <laughs> with a whole bunch of kids that are going out in a boat to this rave on an island. Some of the kids miss the boat and have to charter one. And they eventually get there and everyone's missing. And then... It's a, like a zombie attack. And that's including a lot of, I think, unnecessary stuff at the beginning. Basically, there's an island and zombies attack. Yeah, that's about right. <laughs> yeah, there you go. So let's go into our what the fuck moments. I will start us out. The line, they say God doesn't give us two hands. Sega rave. What appears to be a gassy shark attack. Zombie ravers. Throughout the movie, there are random cuts to the video game itself being played. Splashy bloody tadpoles. The zombie requiem for a dream cam. Mutated blood. Fucking genius. <laughs> <laughs> Just like the video game, characters get a rotating death screen when they die. The, the background turns red and the camera pans around them and it fades to black. Except some of the characters don't. Yeah. This is a movie that's kind of gotten a lot of shit over the years. Because it's terrible. That's one, that's one reason, to be fair. <laughs> but it's, it's a movie that's gotten a lot of shit over the years because it feels so inept, I guess. It, it, it just doesn't have, like, a kind of follow-through on anything, and things are just randomly thrown in. And I, I think this is Uwe Boll's first American film, right? Uh, how would I know? <laughs> <laughs> Just pretend. Yeah, yeah, I think I think you're right, Michael. Here's my thought when watching it. I'm right on the fence because I can't decide, is this the best film ever made? Oh my god, I was thinking about that. <laughs> I was gonna say that. I was gonna say, is this the best film ever made? Or is this the worst film ever or made? Or is this a steaming pile of shit by people who don't know anything about their craft? I'm going to go with the latter because I've seen other Uwe Boll movies and they're all horrible. Or, well, at least all the ones that I've seen are. But it almost feels as if this is a movie made by people who hate horror movies. I thought it was a movie made by somebody who just got a new video camera and wanted to see what it would do. <laughs> <laughs> there are a lot of things that feel like that. Now, I want to go into that in a second. But the, the point that I want to make is that... It is, it almost works as tongue in cheek, almost, because it feels as if, especially with the uh, just going to the video game yeah, now yeah, and then. Yeah, I, I see it there. Yeah. That's about the only place I see it. Because it, it seriously, it feels like an insult to the audience. It feels like, <laughs> oh, it's all the fucking same to you, you brain dead morons. I mean, I would have rather watched someone demo the game on YouTube. Watch yeah, this. watch a Let's Play on YouTube with some, like, kid with a lisp who's like, and now we're gonna fight more zombies. And, oh, these zombies are really hard. And now, yeah, I, I definitely And they go did. boom. <laughs> <laughs> that probably would have been more entertaining. But it did kind of feel as if Uwe Boll was approached about this and he was like, oh, I'm so excited to make a movie in America. That's my German accent because I'm horrible at and then they were like, it's going to be a horror movie. And he's like, oh, that's... Mine horror. That... <laughs> he's like, oh, that shit? <laughs> Fuck you. What do you think I am? Whore? And then they're like, <laughs> uh, we'll pay you X million dollars. And he's like, oh, when do we have to shoot it? Because it really felt to me as if either nobody knew what the hell they were doing or else it was made by nobody wanted to be there. I, you know, it reminded me a little bit at going to like the Lovecraft Film Festival and they, people submit all sorts of videos supposed to be based on the works mm. and some of them are just so fucking boring and stupid. Oh, I bet. I hate saying that, but, and some of them are so fucking good. That's the thing. It's like, there's always one really long, boring one where someone's, their internal monologue is just taken over and there's like a beach <laughs> and you know, the guy's wearing glasses and he has like long stringy hair. It's kind of like that. Yeah. And, and I'm sure the people who made it are like, oh, this is so Lovecraftian because nothing happens in it. 
all it, the horror is in the buildup and then it just ends and it's like, you don't get Lovecraft. I mean, I feel like I need to do another what the fuck moment with the evil spirit on the island. There was no evil spirits on the island. Oh my God. That whole section. I mean, just... why, why do you even mention that? Well, why did they even... I? Why did they get off the boat first? They're, okay. So, Jürgen Prochnow and Clint Howard, which uh, I, I knew he was going to show up more than once in, <laughs> it, when we were doing these, but... like, galoshes. Yeah. <laughs> he's, he's playing the killer from I Know What You Did Last <laughs> Summer, basically. Uh, they run a... a, a I don't know, a shipping boat? A fishing boat? Whatever the fuck it's supposed a to be. A legal cartel. Yeah, not a not a boat that ferries people. And they're the boat that these guys charter to go to this island. And once they tell them where they're going, uh, Jurgen and Clint are like, no, fuck no, we will not do it. And then they offer them like 30% more than they did before. It's not even that big of an increase in a thousand money. thousand bucks. Right, as opposed to 600 And they're like, well, okay then. Gas ain't cheap. <laughs> but, but the reason they say they won't go is because of the evil spirits and, oh, it's so fucking terrifying. And then later, you know, when all the shit's hit the fan, one of the characters is like, so you guys seem to know what's up, what's going on. And they're like, oh, it's just an old wives' tale. Yeah, Sobey's Island's haunted. <laughs> yeah, which n nothing in the old wives' tale had anything to do with evil spirits. And beyond that, it's like, if you just thought it was an old wives' tale, why were you like, no, fuck you, I won't go? And whose wife is this? Someone old. All right, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> oh, another thing, the ruin. The ruin where this house lay. What was the ruin for? It was kind of like a predator ruin, right? Are you talking about the cemetery? The cemetery. I could be wrong, but I believe there are two houses in this movie. One is the church and the cemetery, and the other is just a house. And the whole thing takes place on an island. Right. Island of the Dead. Yes. It should have been called, I don't know, maybe Dead Island, but that would be a stupid title, right? That'll never sell. The Video yeah, game. I, I could be wrong because it was never implicitly or explicitly made clear, but I believe... There is a church with gravestones out front, and then there is a house, and the two groups meet up in the church, and then they go to the house. Uh -huh. I think that's what happens, but they might have just gone back to the church. But then that church has, like, a dining room table and uh, shit beneath it. But I think I, that was a slab. <laughs> <laughs> Could have. After a little thought. <laughs> it, yeah, it's, it's, but it, oh my god. This definitely does at times feel, though, you're right, as, as if somebody just got a new camera or, and they were like, hey, what's the, god, what's Slow like, motion? Yeah, what's how slow does slow motion work? So, you know what this made me think of, which many big action scenes often do, is, you know that part in Dust Till Dawn when everything changes and the attack happens, right? And you know how, like, you have... I don't know, maybe 20 characters at the beginning of that, and you have to follow them all, and only Robert Rodriguez or Sam Peckinpah, if he were alive, could have edited that scene because it is so intense and there's so many things going on and you have to be just a fucking brilliant editor to be able to make everything line up and make it follow some sort of semblance of a, a through line, right? This turns into that as if, like... They couldn't get it right, so everybody had their opportunity. Yeah, like 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 they just kind of let Billy come in and play around for a while, and then they were like, now if we just put Billy Monday, Billy Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, everything you did those days just back to back, we're good. Like, for instance, there are some shots in this huge action scene that I, I think was about 20 minutes long. I mean, I could be wrong. I know we went through a four-minute Prodigy or something song twice, Mm -hmm. So it was at least eight minutes long. Oh, yeah, long. yeah. Uh, we were playing the game. We, yeah, it, it, I, I think that's what they were going for, but I'm not sure. But, but in there, we get, like, shots of, you know, like a zombie with no legs crawling along. And it's like, okay, that's kind of cool, but it has no context. It doesn't mean anything. It's just thrown in there. It's like, oh, hey... Uh, Uwe, look what the makeup people can do. Oh, that's cool. Let's shoot it. Okay, well, don't we want to put it... No, just shoot that. Just shoot that shit. We'll throw it in somewhere. His accent is really changing when I do it. So. Yeah, Sutter Kane, man. Okay, um, I but, didn't get why the zombies didn't eat brains. They vomited acid. They it, bit. Sometimes. And then they chop people with axes. <laughs> yeah. I just couldn't, I just didn't really understand what they were doing. And they, they looked like voodoo priestess. 
Right, because I assumed that there was like a ship of voodoo people that got crashed on the island and then the zombies that were there took them over. Yeah, they didn't really feel like zombies. They just felt like reanimated dead people who were like, damn kids, get off my property! And they couldn't like smell, even though they tried to. Like literally at one point there's a guy in a shirt covered with shit. Because they found him in a porta potty in a honey bucket. That's honey bucket? That's what they're called. That's disgusting. <laughs> this guy covered with shit lays low and there's a zombie sniffing about, I don't know, three to four feet above him. And the, the zombies can't smell him. And it's only when he makes a loud noise that they come back. The zombies are just very random. I mean, it could have just been a deer going to the bathroom in the woods on a shirt. But wouldn't they want a deer as well? Hmm. You make a really good point there, Michael. <laughs> I mean, but I don't know, maybe they wouldn't, because they don't really seem to eat the the, the characters or anything, mm-hmm. right? They just kind of hug them to death. Yeah. It's just, totally. and then they fall down. I don't really understand that whole zombie method of murder. The, the zombies didn't make much sense. The people didn't make a hell of a lot of sense either. We should talk about the Spanish conquistador... Frankenstein. That is the most brilliant flashback I've ever seen. The, the, who it was like, look, I have a sepia button. We can do 1700s. It's all good. In this sepia flashback, we get Napoleon meeting Vin Diesel in the bowels of a ship, and it's awesome. It's like the most terrifying thing ever. Sorry, and, yeah. then, and then, <laughs> and then Vin Diesel, or Spanish Vin Diesel, literally says, what, are you scared? And that allows Napoleon to get close enough for him to strangle him. <laughs> it's like, that's good to know that back in those days, it still worked to be like, what, are you a pussy? So yeah, he was over on uh, Plum Island doing experiments. Yeah. Yeah, and... Uh... Uh, Spanish Vin Diesel turns into Dr. Moreau, except Dr. Zombie Moreau. Yes. And I guess reanimates Napoleon's entire crew, but now they're loyal to him. And Caribbean looking. Wait, how are they Caribbean looking? Because they were wearing all those like... Not the conquistadors, though. (laughs) (laughs) That's right. I I think we probably saw that a time or two, since the zombies were usually just people in Hawaiian shirts with like kind of... They kind of looked like bad homemade... Halloween outfits. Mummy costume. Yeah, mummy costumes or maybe like... Swamp thing. You know, mom tried to make me a kangaroo Dirt outfit. Thing. Rock man. <laughs> yes. Oh, there were the rock monsters in underground, randomly. There were, it was like those things from Noah, right? Uh, the Nephilim and Noah. <laughs> we, we had, we had like little Nephilim. I kept a running tits count because... The movie just starts off just throwing tits in our faces. And then sadly, it very quickly dries up. I only got up to four pairs of tits. And and so this movie starts in an odd way. Besides just throwing tits at us, it also starts with ridiculously unnecessary narration. (laughs) The narration served two purposes that I could see in this film. One, confusion. to mention (laughs) that... I don't, I don't want to say main character, because really Clint Howard is the main character of this damn movie. That the narrator's ex-girlfriend has really gotten into fencing, which totally pays off in the Sexy. last scene, which is awesome. <laughs> and at the very end, to fill you in in case you didn't realize what was going on, because it is somewhat unclear even with the narration. But you could have just made that ending a little more clear and torn away all of the narration at the beginning, and it would have flowed a little better. Like, the best part of the narration at the beginning is when he's introducing all of his friends and the film just, like, stops and goes to a black and white photograph while he says stuff. Mm -hmm. Then none of those characters act in the ways that he described them. (laughs) Foxy Brown. (laughs) Right? She thinks she's Foxy Brown. And the way that we see this is her saying things like, oh, let's just get on the boat. (laughs) Which does not call to my mind Foxy Brown. (laughs) (laughs) So also we get an opening credits scene that is like Prodigy over... The Matrix Reloaded soundtrack. Sure. And visually it's like, I don't know, like 8-bit scrambled porn. Totally. Then we get the line, God, you know, they say God doesn't give us two hands. (gasps) Whoa. 
Who says that? Who says that? Who actually said that? The narrator. Oh, yeah. When he was describing the guy who was pretty but stupid. Oh, yeah. God doesn't give us two hands, so he's pretty, but he's we really didn't have dumb. much between the years. Even though later he says, this house has been here for millennia. They point out that this chick knows cartographer, so that makes her college educated. But then he throws out millennia the next, like, uh, two scenes later, which didn't seem to make much sense. Though, So the rave, to me, first of all, the rave was kind of ridiculous. I thought it looked kind of fun. It reminded me of those ads I keep seeing on YouTube about the Budweiser Pick town. Up the phone! <laughs> I don't know what that is, but have you seen those ads for the Budweiser town where it's like, uh -huh. hey, are you rich and white and you could come do whatever the fuck you want for a while? Come to the Budweiser town. We're so goddamn hip. Yeah! And this was like the Sega town. This is like MTV Beach House, like 1991. Sadly, this movie was 2003. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't see any drugs. No. Very, well, I mean, alcohol. I guess that counts as a drug, right? Uh, <laughs> in Idaho. It was Thing, like a dry right? rave, save for a little bit of one Mai Tai. That would have been cool if, like, the, the fucking zombies got on E and That'd were, like, cool. you know, the zombies were just, like, rubbing themselves against the tree bark <laughs> for, like, six hours, taking away, like, the epidermis They wouldn't get out of the hammocks. Yeah, like zombies in K-holes. This could have been, like, there was this whole wide array of things you could have done here. And instead, it was just, basically everybody's dead by the time we get there. Except Liberty, who is my favorite character. <laughs> Liberty is wearing Tummy. a... a <laughs> Liberty is wearing a, uh, a onesie that has the flag on it. And her which, name, which flag? And the American <laughs> flag. And her name is Liberty. It's brilliant. Fucking brilliant. And Liberty's death pissed me off so much because Rudy, our narrator... Just let her go. He just stares at her, vaguely disinterested, and then he has this weird, like, catatonic flashback to everything that's happened in the movie so far... With like, as if like, oh, he's going to fucking break out some shit now, right? Like, it's going to make him snap. They rewound the whole movie and played it like really quickly. <laughs> <laughs> and threw some prodigy in there yeah. and called it a scene. And it just cuts back to him and he just stares at her kind of like, meh, I guess it wasn't that into you. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, no. It reminded me of Alex at the end of Puppet Master when he's like, this is exactly what I came here to stop, but... Meh, yeah, this is not that bad. See ya. So we get Clint Howard and Jurgen Prock now, the, the boat riders. They are also the harbingers. They are the harbingers so hardcore in this movie. Though, then they are used as a plot crutch because we have to introduce guns somehow. So they're smuggling guns. Even though we then also get police introduced and the police have guns. And you could have just introduced the police and had guns from them, right? But they don't have that many guns. And they're not just the police, aren't they like... The ADR police? The ADR police. <laughs> right, they're like fish patrol yeah, or whatever. Yeah, totally. Well, but that's the thing. I mean, if they're like the Coast Guard or whatever, they could have had some cool weaponry. Flares. You know, and, and there could have just been like a smuggler's cove that had weapons on the island, right? Some pirate booty. Like, maybe there are a couple of smugglers who are brave enough to go there and use maybe this. Maybe zombie smugglers have their own supply. Ooh, zombie smugglers. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. They could be I don't I don't know what zombies would smuggle. Smuggling in brains? Uh cigars. <laughs> so some some Mai Tais. Mai Tais. It wasn't really a zombie movie. I mean there were zombies, but they weren't real zombies. They were like decaying things moving around really fast and like trying to get everybody. It does feel like it really wanted to be a Dr. Moreau story. Yeah. Like, they, it, I, Uevo really wanted them to be attacked by, like, people with cat heads and shit. <laughs> right? Gremlins, too. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that would have, that probably would have uh, worked out uh, much better. And then we have kids being stupid. That was, I mean, that was something that I thought about with it because we literally have like every bad horror movie cliche. And that's why I kept thinking, is this tongue in cheek? Is this trying to be Cabin in the Woods? You know, we have uh, somebody looking for someone else. And, you know, that was, I remember that was my best friend's biggest peeve about horror movies. The whole like, Matt, Matt, are you in here? 
this isn't funny anymore. We don't get that line, but we get, don't play games. Are you in this house? Right, are you in this creepy, lichen-covered church in the middle of nowhere with no lighting? And then he is! He fucking is! I mean, he's dead, but still, he is. Like, the zombies were like, this is going to be a great fucking trap to spring. Yeah. She should have never gone near that house. She should have been like, hey, Matt, did you maybe fall in the jungle or something at that well, point? But where were all the ravers? By that point, everyone was just about missing, because they had gone away on their own. Um, yeah, I assume they were getting taken down by zombies. Yeah. When the policewoman shows up and becomes part of the plot, she literally shoots first and asks questions later. Oh, yeah. I thought that was awesome. There is what appears to be a young girl with a little bit of blood on her face running around, and the policewoman shoots her <coughs> in the fucking head, then comes over and says, what's going on? <laughs> or who was Who's that? that? Who's that? Right. No, it wasn't. <laughs> that no more. And it was like, wow, these police are hardcore in this area. Do you notice that there was more underwater fighting in this movie than Navy SEALs and Jaws combined? <laughs> and then a lot of underwater stuff that didn't go anywhere. Like the gassy shark attack? I, I don't even know if there was a zombie there. Yeah, I really had a good opportunity to be zombie. Dario Gento zombie. But instead it was just... Oh, a bunch of splashing around. And a, a camera underwater. A gassy manta ray. <laughs> Perhaps. And some a bubble bath. Oh, so we were talking about the things that Uwe was trying out with the camera earlier and how it really felt as if he didn't know what the hell he was doing. But there was one thing that came out of that that was awesome. The shotgun versus the axe matrix bullet time <laughs> thing that happened it was like one of the best scenes I have ever oh, seen yeah, in my yeah. life. <laughs> Except for the fact that I didn't care about any of the characters in it and it didn't make any logical sense whatsoever. It was just mind-blowingly cool. You should describe it, Michael, so that everybody understands what you mean. So there's a... I can't even remember which character it was now. But just make something up. Yeah, so there's... <laughs> so we're in space. So one, So essentially, there's this battle that happens at about the halfway point of the movie where they're trying to get into this house and they have to fight approximately 7 million zombies. And this is where literally a song is played twice with some of the bridge of the song in between because they didn't want to point out that they just literally hit replay. But one of the characters has a shotgun and this zombie fucking jumps up to come at her from like 30 feet away, throws an axe. Okay, and, and, and Casper, the cop, jumps up, shoots the shotgun, and we fly around in bullet time watching this happen from like 18 different points of view. We see the shotgun shell eject, and then they kind of get this wrong. They do like many, many tiny bullets. Oh, she does say they're incendiary shells, right? So maybe that's how incendiary shells work. I, I, I assume they were always pellets, no matter what. I was just a nice close-up. Uh, Casper falls down so that the axe goes over her head, and we see the zombie's, like, chest explode from all of the uh, the, the gunshot. And, Shrapnel. And it is just awesome. It is so cool. When all the zombies' heads were exploding and shit, I thought those were all really well done. Yeah, and I liked it when, um, when the one dude's head got stepped on. Yeah, by, yeah. By her... That was her very hero. trauma feeling. Yeah, I like that a lot. Where are they? Like a man ball. Because <laughs> <laughs> her fencing classes really paid off mm -hmm. there. Even though that fucking ending happened on like a merry-go-round yeah. and was really dizzying, I don't know why that happened. Every now and then we would just spin around the characters really fast. I think during the big fight when we do that, it was meant to be like character selection in a game. But then which, every now and then we would just do it for no reason. Which characters? Oh, when it was spinning around in the second? Yeah, you know, on, like, like... Like a dumb waiter. Not a dumb waiter, sorry. A Mary, Susan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lisa Susan. Right, and I think it was supposed to, you know, like when you play a video game and you look at, like, you know, Billy and it and Billy spins around. With it's all like, the stats. Yeah, yeah. We have a horror movie explanatory journal in here, and it is the most useless thing ever because it literally just is like, oh, hey, I found a ship's log. Yeah, it pretty much confirms what you told us two scenes ago. So why did we bother finding it? It doesn't even make any sense that it exists. Because the character is like, yeah, it says here 
that uh, uh, Spanish Vin Diesel murdered all of the crew and then took... And it's like, well, who was keeping the log? Did they seriously murder all the crew and then keep the log up to date? Because that seems uh, a little unnecessary. And then eventually the zombies started to kind of work for him, the Spanish, the Spanish Vin Diesel. Apparently. Like his, as a minions of some kind. I mean, I guess they were like, well... It's probably lonely on an island. Right. What else are we going to do, right? Yeah. The mutated blood. Tell me about that, Audrey, because you're kind of a doctor. Oh, yeah, a doctor I would see in the house. Yeah, mutated blood is basically when it goes from A to B. This kind of comes into play towards the end of the film where we're in Spanish Vin Diesel's lab. And we go That's in there. B, not lab. Lab, laboratory. And we see the splotchy blood tadpoles swimming around in like this goo we see a whole bunch of like decapitated heads of zombies mummy looking ones with no wrappings and inside of this microscope there is a petri dish or a slide with some mutated blood that hasn't dried up in what 100 years 200 years I, 300 I, years i get i mean i assume that because he's, he's just blood. well i assume that he's just got a new batch that he's looking at oh maybe okay so yeah so this mutated blood's just like hanging out there in the slide, and then they see this thing move, the splashy, bloody tadpole, and some dumb person shoots the tank, and then the splashy, bloody tadpole comes out of the tank, and all this blood reanimates all of the zombie pieces and people that are laying down in the, in the laboratory, which sucks because then they have to fight them. <laughs> the fact that we have this revivification liquid seems unnecessary or the fact that we have the mutated blood seems unnecessary because it's like well is it one or the other do you, did you make a magic juice that reanimates the dead and if you can or did you them, mute... they turn yeah we never really get that i assume that's where the jürgen Prochnow plot was going but then he just fucking smokes a stick of dynamite and D -D. Uh, yeah and and dies that way the one thing that you forgot to mention about the mutated blood what? it's fucking brilliant fucking genius whatever but i don't think blood mutates i don't think that's how a mutation works i think mutation happens in dna not in blood i think blood can mutate burn it smoke it <laughs> <laughs> drink it like like what would it mutate into like Fuck cow it. blood you know <laughs> or i i like sewage i mean it's not gonna mutate into like zombie blood red blood cells or white blood cells <laughs> Red blood to blue blood. <laughs> then you've got a whole different set of you got problems royal on blood. your hand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> then you're they all just turn into royalty. That's the next mutation that they just sit around sipping tea. Live forever. Right, he's got like a little tea cozy. The ending. What did you think of the ending? I thought it was really cool that Alicia didn't die, even though she got stabbed in the heart and there wasn't any blood. And then he like made her live with Something that must have burned up in all the explosions. We're not really sure how he got the potion of the mutated blood to give her. Well, he thought it was fucking awesome, so he must have grabbed some and put it in a Stashed. file somewhere. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, maybe just like, I don't know. Or maybe just one glance through a microscope and he was able to completely reconstruct the process. Yeah. I, I figure he had the body of Spanish Vin Diesel there. Yeah. And, you know, maybe he could have just... A, a fountain of blood. Maybe he just squeezed that over her body <laughs> until enough shook out and he was sure that she was okay. Mm -hmm. I really thought at the end, I was like, oh, this is the movie I want to see. House of the Dead in Manhattan. Yes. But I was like, oh, the idea that, you know, he's brought this chick back to life and... Um, I mean, that was, what was it, uh, Revenge, or, was it Of Revenge? the Nerds. No, was that, uh, fuck, what was that movie called? Not nerds, Nerds, Nerds. <laughs> Return of the Living Dead 3, I think. Return of the Nerds. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still so, like, because I'm kind of an eternal optimist, I feel like... Um, this is the worst movie that was ever made, and it didn't do any justice to the game. I feel like this is... My favorite horror movie of all time now because Are you fucking kidding me. Now it's probably always going to be Dust Till Dawn. But I'm like, if if you can just jump over that really high suspension of disbelief 
The suspension of disbelief doesn't at all come from the movie. It comes from believing that this was meant to be tongue-in-cheek. And if it was... You need a big stereo system and 12 of your closest friends to sit around and watch it with you. This is like the room yeah, as far this... as uh, group watching enjoyment. <laughs> it's just a dumb movie. Well, sure, it's dumb, but it wasn't... But it wasn't scary at all. No, but it wasn't trying to be smart. Or good. Or interesting. Look, Audrey, or you, fun. You, know, you know how they say it was God, horrible. Like, God doesn't give us two hands, okay? It couldn't be both smart and pretty. So it chose neither. Like, I, I love Simon's death scene, and he doesn't get a Revolvi death scene either, but Simon's death is... He shoots a keg of gunpowder, and an entire house explodes because of that. Yet the people who were six feet away are okay. Yeah. Like, they they got kind of dusty. Yeah. I mean, they were wondering who was going to gonna take care of that. No logic was followed in this, and I that's what I liked about it. I like the fact that the zombies, some of them look like people in gray sweats and some of them look like emperor palpatine and this movie was crap doo doo <laughs> it's a divisive movie apparently <laughs> what one thing would you change to make it a better film Ooh. Mm. and they would have had zombie <laughs> zombie ravers more of them and like more more, spo more spotlight on it yeah, it's just like everything that could have been cool about this movie just wasn't developed at all. For me, I would have all the beginning bit of the movie just been some narration that was like, no, it was your typical weekend. Zombies attacked a rave. I had to kill all my friends. Only made it out alive by revivifying my girlfriend with magic juice that a Spanish Vin Diesel had made years ago in a laboratory underneath it all. You know how it goes. Yeah. Anyway, here's our story. And then it turns into, like, Made in Manhattan. Yeah. That would have been, I think, a much better movie. Two pluses. <laughs> With an A. <laughs> <laughs> just two pluses on their own. That doesn't... That's just a battery that doesn't work. <laughs> All right. I guess that about wraps it up then. So, uh, so, yeah, unless you had anything else to add. Oh, no. <laughs> this is Michael T. Bradley. And Audrey Ivancy. Have a good one. Bye.